We're here today with Mubarak from Bezo Money. Yeah. Thank you so much for making the time. Thank you, too. Mubarak, what does Bezo Money exactly do? Right. So, um, first of all, I would like to tell you what Bezo Money means. So, the word Bezo is from uh, one of the uh, dialects in Ghana. Mm -hmm. It means a group. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Bezo Money literally means group money. Uh, what we are doing is that we're digitizing uh, traditional savings groups. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're very familiar with them, but uh, what happens is that a group of people come together Mm -hmm. and then they meet um, every week mm -hmm. and then they put some, some some money together which is kept in a, in a common fund mm -hmm. now each person within the group can then take um, you know a loan from the common fund okay. and then pay back at, at a little time with, with interest right so what we are doing is we're digitizing these savings groups and the main reason why we're digitizing these groups is that we, we realize that they have some issues with the way they, they, they currently save the money so okay. when they put the money together like that they put the money in a box some mm -hmm. put the money under their mattresses now this money can lose value, um, the money can also be stolen, um, the money can be mismanaged and most importantly because of how the money is saved, the members cannot build a savings and credit history. So mm -hmm. at as, as any point in time when someone needs a loan that is bigger than what they have in the pool or mm -hmm. the pot, it's, it's very difficult for the person to go to a bank to you know, you know, like get a loan. What we are doing is first of all to like digitize it, make it very secure, safe, uh, very convenient for them to save their money and then help them build a savings and credit history that can help them to be able to access more money from former financial institutions. <laughs> Aside from being able to give them loans, we, we give them you know, access to insurance, to investments, to, to pensions. We also help them to be able to pay for products and services in you know, installments. Okay, yeah. wow. So all of this you do by basically digitizing these traditional savings so groups. Yes. And then you give them a, uh, a basically yeah, a digital history yes. that then banks, insurances can rely on yes. Yes. to see what kind of services can we make available to these to these groups, exactly. which formerly That's weren't available to them. Yes. Yes. Well, how did you come up with this idea? Right. So um, there was a time that I that I went home. You know, I'm actually out of the MES, uh, you know program. MES is a Mills Water Entrepreneur School of Technology. Um, I went on one day during our capstone period. Uh, that's where we actually form teams and then find problems, work on them, come up with an idea and pitch. Yeah. So I, I, I went on one day and then saw that my mom and her friends were doing this group saving. I, I didn't really pay attention to, to it for a very long time. And it, it, it then struck me that for a very long time, they've been doing this thing and that's what she, she's been using to pay for her fees, mm -hmm. right? So. You know, a lot of things that um, she, she, you know, buys or uh, pays for, that is where she gets the money from. So okay. I, I decided to, you know, look into it. I came back to me, spoke to my friends. I was like, we need to look into this thing. Uh -huh. And then we found that there was something that was very prominent and very, uh, very, very, very popular in many developing countries. Mm -hmm. Right. So we also found out that there were other startups in other countries that were doing the same thing. So that's sort of okay. sparked the interest for us to look into it. All right. Now... Just before we move further, I really want to understand the value of these savings groups for okay. the people that participate in them. Okay. So the first thing that comes to my mind is that if you have an unexpected cost, yes. for example, maybe a medical bill or something, yeah. then that could work as a sort of a insurance, right? Because yes. a group is contributing, but together, you know, there is like a, a some money for something unexpected. Mm -hmm. so am I, am I yeah. thinking that correctly? Yeah, that's how it works. What else is this community money used for, right? Because if everyone took something out of it every month, then that wouldn't make sense. Yes. So, so what is it really used for? What are the most common use cases for people to tap into this, uh, into this group savings? Group savings yeah? Right. So um, first of all, uh, the most important thing is the fact that uh, the group saving provides a form of community building for them. Okay. So um, let, uh, let's assume there are you know, a group of 30 people who save money at, at a bank. Uh, these people would, would, would most likely go to the bank at different points in time. Mm -hmm. But when they save in groups, they, are, they are actually meet at the end of every week. They check up on, on each other, you know. So in a way, it, 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 it kind of brings them to, together. Mm. And then it, it helps you to, to, to sort of know what's happening in the other person's life. Okay, so it really has a social function. Yes. As well. Okay. A exactly. And the, the other thing is that um, they, uh, the, you know, group saving sort of empowers them. Mm -hmm. So they are, they are actually involved with the process of bringing the, the, the money together. So, so, so let's say that, that there's someone within um, that community who, let's say, up, uh, up until that time has not had any posts within, within the, you know, the society. Yeah. When, the, when a person joins the group, the, the, the person gets to become like a secretary. Yeah, you know, yeah. So it makes them feel good. So yeah. they, are, they are very much involved with the entire process. They you know, count the money. They actually know how to manage 
it's a, and then make sure that they don't they don't they don't give out loans that are bigger than the money that they have in the pool mm -hmm. and they, they, they don't even have too many people taking loan from the pool okay. i mean things like that right and then um with the group savings there's actually another model mm -hmm. it's actually called the rosca 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 yes mm -hmm. and that's where the money goes round Okay. So what happens is that these people meet at the end of every week and yeah. then they put the money together, give the money to one person. And then the following week, they do the same thing, give it to you know, another person. Okay. And so everybody gets the box up. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. now, now what this helps them with is that it helps them to be able to get interest-free bulk capital. Yeah. Right? So you have money from your group. You don't have to pay back with interest. You just pay back by paying the other person. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And I then uh, with the model that we are working with, you know, uh, when each person takes a, a loan from the pool mm -hmm. and then pays back the, the, the loan with, with the interest, at the end of the year, they actually sit down and then calculate the amount of money each person has saved. Mm -hmm. And then they then give that bulk sum to each person. Okay. Yeah. So it's it, it has, I, I think the main reason why they do it is because it has a social function. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. So that's not to be underestimated. What I can, because in this Rosca model that yeah. you described, yeah. I can imagine that, let's say, 30 people come together, yeah. that yeah. it's much easier for someone to get access to bulk capital, yes. as you describe it, this way than to actually save it up yourself, right? Yeah. Because it requires a lot of discipline to yeah. save for 30 weeks, for example. Yeah. Meanwhile, many people might not have that much money mm -hmm. and it, you might be rather tempted to access this in between. Yeah. So you might not be able to save up for any even smaller investments yeah. like so what's your business model now behind it so you you say you will digitize it makes sense to me you have active users yeah so what's the business model uh, behind, behind it? it okay right so um first of all you know um we actually have a personal wallet uh -huh. and then we have a group wallet uh -huh. so uh with the personal wallet each person within the group can create an account and, and then you know create a personal group that uh, he or she wants to save this amount by the end of the month or the end of the year and the person then states the amounts that he or she wants to save daily, mm -hmm. right? So with the personal am amounts, uh, uh, you know, currently in Ghana, there's something called SUSU. Mm -hmm. And that is where people put, uh, put down small sums of money for, for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. And mostly they, they give this money to someone they call uh, SUSU collector. Mm -hmm. This person comes around every day. Mm -hmm. So at the end of that period, the person takes uh, the amount for one of the days. So if, if, if it's 30 days, the person takes the last day and gives you the money for the 29 days. Mm -hmm. So the personal wallet is built on top of this concept, mm -hmm. right? So with us, with with, the, with our personal wallets, we take one point five percent. The 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 a, a susu person takes three percent. So our, ours is cheaper than 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 we. Okay. Are, so what does the susu person exactly do? They come around. So you basically you have a saving score, yes. right? So then the susu they collector comes comes around and then and they, they help you save yes. basically. Yes. So it's it's like um, you know uh, these uh, these kind of people, they make money daily. Okay. Uh, they are the people that are at the marketplaces, yeah. the, you know, like commercial drivers. They make money. They, they don't make money. They, they don't make a salary. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, when they make this money daily and they don't, let's say, put a small portion of, of the money down, they might end up spending everything. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's their way of making sure that at the end of the month, they have a bulk sum that they can fall on for things that they have to do. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. So, so the Susu Collector is sort of like... Your uh, personalized bank account, exactly. if you don't have a bank account, they help you to kind of collect, save this money for you in a secure place, yes. but then you still have access to it. Yes, that's, All right. that's how it works. So um, this, uh, this, uh, this thing goes on for, I mean, it, it, it's been going on for a very long time. And then uh, this, uh, this is what they do. And, and uh, you know, there's this thing that, that people say uh, that uh, uh, the money in the economy is mostly in the informal sector. Yeah. And, and these people don't put the money into the formal sector. They yeah. would rather put the money under their beds or give it to the Susu su collector yeah. and then things like that. So it, it also with a, a Susu you know, collector, they also don't, don't help you get, get a, in, interest on your money. Uh, they don't help you build a savings and credit history. With that system, when you save with the personal wallet, you get uh, I mean, benefits like, uh, okay. like that. And then with the group wallet, uh, we, uh, when we give a loan to the group, we make a, a, a certain percentage. So we, uh, the, uh, the loan doesn't come from us. Uh -huh. the, uh, the loan comes from a partner. So when a partner gives them the loan, we make a percentage on that, on the, okay. on the interest on, on the loan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask again about the Susu collector. Mm. Where do they put it? Do they then collect it and put it in a bank? Um, some of them use the bank. Some suggest hold the money like that oh, for, wow. for that period of time. Wow. Yeah. And so... 
the CISO collectors are mostly targeting people that don't have a bank account. Yes. Yeah? Okay, yes. okay. And that is where you come in. Exactly. You stay through mobile money payment mobile money, yes. or savings. You can, yeah, basically save in a, in, in a digital economy. Exactly. Has it worked so far with your, with your first users? Um, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. um, they were very excited to, I mean, have something like that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they they already use uh, mobile money to send money, so mm -hmm. you know they are they are they are very um, low on, on tech. So yeah. even with mobile money, they don't really uh, play with some of the the options there on the on the interface. Uh -huh. They they just go to the agents, give the agents money for the agents to send the money to someone, right? So what what we are, what we are saying is that our system is built on top of the, the mobile money. So you can I mean like you do, you can just go to the agents, give him money to put the money in, in your wallet. Yeah, in your, in your in your your mobile money wallet. Then yeah. we take the money from the mo mobile money wallet and then put it in our wallet yeah. and then hold it for the period of time that you specify. Okay. Uh -huh. So they are. I mean, they are. They are very happy to have something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, because it's built on mobile money. So uh -huh. the and it, they don't use it. To, they don't use mobile money to save money. They don't uh -huh. have that kind of mindset. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Use that to save money. So we we're, we're, we're like a vase on top of the mobile money that they, they, they could use. And uh, even we, we actually have a logo for the Bezos. It's actually a box with a pole. Okay. So we, when they saw it, they were like, ah, is this like my Susu box? Uh -huh. But now in the phone. <laughs> okay, okay. And that, so that they could really make a direct association, yeah. the link between the traditional way yeah. of doing it, and then now bringing it online. Exactly. So exactly. essentially they're saving money while saving money because you're cheaper <laughs> than the Susu collector. Yeah. Uh, and I guess it's also more secure because the Susu collector might hold it, as you said, yeah. physically yeah. under his or her mattress, which does not sound very secure. Some, some even run out with, with the money. And there have been wow. a lot of instances where people take the bulk money and they run away. Wow. <laughs> and still people trust the Susu collector? People still do it. <laughs> That's very interesting. They still do it. You have, you, you have started in Ghana. Yes, we've started. You have currently 200 users. Yeah. What's your what's your vision? Where do you where do you want to take this? Mm. So um, we we actually envision becoming Africa's largest community based digital bank. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we we think that um, you know uh, when banking was introduced to Africa, it, it was uh, more uh, tailored to the high end population, right? So those at the bottom still didn't have something that really worked for them. And and these people have been doing this group savings since then, like for a very long time. And what happened was that those banks came in. But they were able to capture those that were well to do, people that use checks and and, and then whatnot. Um, the microfinance people saw an opportunity because mm -hmm. they realized that the banks were not, you know, like catering to the people that are at the bottom. Yeah. So, so 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 they came in and then tried to capture them. They did well, but they have low tech. Mm -hmm. And I think that is something that is re really hindering the microfinance industry. Yes, exactly. So yeah. um they, they don't really have efficient credit scoring system because they still they also go to the field with Books and, and and pens to take money. Yeah, there was a time. Even we, now. Even now. Wow. There was a time we, we saw a, a group of people take a loan from the microfinance, yeah. and then they, they meet um, at some some point in time, and then they they put money together to pay the loan. So yeah. you go there, you find the agent for, from from the microfinance there with them, with with his book and his pen, and there's money on the table everywhere. Wow. Yeah. I mean that uh, that sounds to me like it's making it complex, but exactly. also more expensive. Exactly. So they 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 take this you know like records on paper. Yeah. They send it to the office. Someone has to enter it into the, in, in, uh, you know, like the, you know, PC. Yeah. It's, a, it's a whole lot of things. So at the end of the day, they don't, they, they are not able to, to more like a properly credit score people. Yeah. So they, they, they end up having to put, you know, high interest rates on, on their loans so that they, they can, they can cover for any, any cost in case someone defaults in pain. Yeah. Right. So they, they tried, but I mean, they have their issues. And right now, even in Ghana and even here in, in Nigeria, they are being closed down here and there. So oh, wow. we are actually coming. We think it's a it's a good thing for us, because we are we are like coming in with the tech angle, mm -hmm. and with you know with, with tech it's easy to, to get things done. Yeah. Some sometimes you wonder why people use I mean paper and pen yeah. where you could just enter the thing on some platform and generate some graphs and just analyze it very easily. Yeah. Right. So so that's where we uh, we you, you know come in. Okay. Yeah. That's very interesting, and I I didn't know that it was so manual. How did you pilot this? How did you get your first two hundred? Customers, you observed your mom, she has a Susu group. Yeah. Then how did you come from that stage where you had this idea and said, okay, you know, why not do that in a digital version to, yeah, yeah to actually rolling it out? I mean, okay. you 
just recently got an investment. Yes. But what? How did you operate before? Okay. So um, I mean, from from my mom's uh, you know story, I came together with, with my team. I'm actually um, a, a design thinking expert. Mm -hmm. I you know work with a, a, a design thinking hub Ghana. So uh, what we did was that we you know came sat down. Mm -hmm. And then applied it, uh, uh, you know, like design thinking to the to the to the entire chain, you know, mm -hmm. like value chain. Mm -hmm. And then we we're, were able to on the main the main uh, things that were, were were happening there. The main reasons why they were saving the way they, they were saving, not using banks. And um, mm -hmm. so we we were able to to sort of find out all of those things. Okay, and to really understand, understand your target group. Exactly. Okay. And what happened was that we we actually moved. Initially, we actually had a web platform. <laughs> okay. And then we moved from the web platform to uh, the Roscar model. Uh -huh. And then we found out that the Roscar model was uh, sort of an old model. And there's one called Aska, where the, the one that I, that, that I, that I said we are, we are trying to work, where they put the money together and they take a loan from the pool. Okay. Now, that is, that is like an improvement of the Roscar model. So mm -hmm. we we initially had the, had something for the uh, Roska, but it was very difficult. We're, we're we're trying to see how we could we could enter. You know they have this thing where this person takes the money first, this guy takes the money second. Yeah. So we're trying to see how we could put that in the tech, yeah. and we thought it was going to be too complex for them to be able to set it up. Yeah. If they were, they were to create a group, so we did all of that. We threw that away and finally settled on the Aska. Okay. And so the people that we signed up on the platform or who signed up later on were the people that were involved in our market research. Okay. Yeah, so they, they thought there was value there. They, they had so many like insights for, for us. They, 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 they really told us why, why they were doing these things, why, why it was you know, like very beneficial uh, to them, uh -huh. uh, what value uh, what we are doing would bring to them, I mean, okay. things like that. Okay. So eventually we, <laughs> we uh -huh. got here. Okay, so that means you really, you really spoke to many people before. Yeah. yeah. Are they in a rural community or in a city or? Okay, so um, some of them are in the uh, rural places, some two are in the cities. And in the okay. cities, we actually went to the slums. Okay. And then spoke to the people in the slums. Okay. We went to marketplaces, things yeah. like that. Okay. And then when you, you know, you, you said we first tested this one, but then we threw this out. Yeah. Does it mean that you were always programming something, uh, to actually developing an app and then throwing that out? Or did you just develop it more on paper and simulate it? Or Yeah, so um, first of all, what, what we did was, uh, so there, there, there are some people that like the Roska model. There yeah. are some people that like the Aska model. Yeah. So um, we first of all came up with more, more like a blueprint mm -hmm. of, of what the thing would be. Mm -hmm. And then we went out and then tested that. Mm -hmm. And apparently the people we met were the people that liked the Roscar. Mm -hmm. And they liked it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we came back. And then, you know, I mean, through our market, we realized that there were more people doing the Aska than the Roska. Okay, and so it depends on who you speak to exactly, and that can lead you in one direction exactly. or the other. So we were like, ah, since we have more people doing the Aska, you know, well, let's go with the, with, with the Aska. And even with that, we still went out with a, a, like a, a, a blueprint framework of the thing. Yeah. We explained to them how the thing was going to work. Yeah. And then we then had to come back and then build something that was very simple. Okay. Right. We didn't want to complicate it because these people, they don't like complicated things. That's why they don't even go to the banks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they have this thing that they say, uh, why do I have to sign so many papers when I've given you my money? Just give me my money back. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you, you showed us earlier it's working on USSD. Yeah, it works on USSD. Right, yeah. because of internet, uh, data costs, and all of this. Okay, so it, uh, I guess it taps into something that people are already used to yeah. as well, right? With mobile money, for yeah. example. How did you finance the the launch and this this entire pilot? It sounds like you know it's a tech solution. Yeah. Doesn't sound easy. Um, during our MES program, we actually had a small a grant mm -hmm. to to use for our you know research. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it was small, but we managed to use it wisely. And then. Okay, okay. And you're the design thinking expert. Yeah. Then you have a tech person as yes. a co-founder. Yes. Okay, okay. And so a marketing person. Too. All right, all right. So your your tech co-founder was just hacking away, trying to set up an MVP. Yeah. So we okay. we you know like go out, talk to the people, come back, you know, and I don't know, like sit down, analyze everything, mm -hmm. and then at the day we come up with something, and then we send it to him. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we even take him to the to the field to actually have a feel of, of I mean like what is happening there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The people that you onboarded, do they stick with it? Do they remain active, or do you, can you see that many of them drop out after? Short um, time? I, I think that some some of them were not using it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but 
um, most of them are still active on Facebook. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So it's really keeping people yeah. locked in and they invest more and more in. Yeah. What would be your advice to a young person mm. in Africa today? <laughs> Is it as someone who wants to like start a business or or in general? In general, I think. I mean, I I would, I would say that there are there are, there are a lot of issues here in in Africa, and uh, you don't you don't necessarily have to I mean reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. There are things out there that are working, and if you think you know we have this thing in Africa, people people say the thing has to be really innovative. I mean, there the, there shouldn't be anything like it. There's nothing new under the sun. Right, everything is is there. Just try and go out there, do your market research, and also talk to your customers. Make sure you're building something that really fits in with the way they they, they live, right? With their you know existing you know behaviors, mm -hmm. right? So I I would say that there, there are no good ideas or bad ideas or innovative ideas. It's all there. There there's no right or wrong idea. At the end of the day, the idea that works, the one that your you know, like user likes, mm -hmm. I mean that's the right one. So go with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I think that's a really, a really good point, and I thank you for sharing that. You often think, "Oh, that's a great idea," but it might not work because people don't want it. Exactly. They think, oh, that's a stupid idea, but <laughs> people use it, and yeah. essentially, it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. One more thing. You mentioned that you will start partnering with Grameen. Can you share more about that? Right. So they have a network of twelve thousand. They are they are over twelve thousand farmers. Yeah. Um. That's um. The you know. Um, the NGO has which in, is in, the in Ghana region. or in worldwide. Or? Um, this uh, twelve thousand farmers are in Ghana, okay. but they are also uh, you know uh, you know like uh, an NGO found in other countries. Yeah, right. So they have a the project called Farm Grow, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was created to help uh, the cocoa farmers in Ghana increase their yield. Mm -hmm. So uh, when they were implementing uh, this project, mm -hmm. they realized that uh, the people. Like uh, there, there was one main challenge to the implementation, and then that was mainly because the people didn't have a better way to save their money. Mm -hmm. So they are they are thought on on uh, they are you know like thoughts uh, things that would help them increase their yield. They get the money, but the money just goes away like that. Mm -hmm. So the NGO realized that the people were saving money in groups. Mm -hmm. So they actually needed someone to come and see how they can digitize and make mm -hmm. the group savings very strong. Mm -hmm. So we happened to come in at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And then we spoke to them, and then they were happy. Yeah, I mean, happy to work with us. Thank you so much. I, I really love that insight, and I think it's a strong example of how you, with a business, a startup, even in early stage, you can launch something, yeah. and then really scale, not by throwing money into marketing, yeah. but through smart partnerships where you add value. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Too. Love it. <laughs> and yeah. All the best. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you very much.